my name is Dr. Ahmed Hamdan and I am an OBGYN with Duke University. Today I'd like to take the time to talk to you all about a time of year that is special to me, to my family, to a lot of my friends, and to 1.6 billion other people on the planet. That's about a quarter of the world's population. And that time of year is known as the month of Ramadan. So what exactly is Ramadan? Ramadan is actually the name of a month. It is the ninth month on the Islamic calendar. And according to the teachings of the faith, it is during this month that the Quran or the sacred text was revealed to mankind. The Islamic calendar is based off lunar cycles. It's not the same length as the conventional 12 month calendar or the Gregorian calendar that we're all used to. And because of that discrepancy, the month of Ramadan does not always fall at the same time in the 12 month calendar every year. Ramadan moves up by about 10 days each year, which means it can occur during any of the four seasons, and this leads to a variation in the number of fasting hours. The number of hours you fast also depends on your region in the world. You can have a 10-11 hour fast in, say, South Africa, or a 16 hour fast in New Zealand. This year, 2023, Ramadan falls approximately from March 22nd to April 20th. Observing this time of year, observing this holiday, is one of the five main tenets or obligations um, of the faith. One of the main aspects of the month of Ramadan is fasting. In fact, this is what most people know the month for. So every day for the 30 days, from dawn until sunset, Muslims abstain from eating and drinking, and this includes water. There are some people who are exempt from fasting and includes those with any of the following conditions. So when we do break our fasts after sunsets every day, that meal is called iftar. And as you can imagine, after several hours of fasting, these meals are elaborate, very elaborate. What's served during these meals varies by culture and region in the world, but the basis is essentially the same. These are multiple course meals that include a variety of salads, of meats and vegetables. There's also a variety of juices and pastries and desserts. And there's also a focus on small caliber foods that are nutrient rich, like dates, nuts, or legumes. And more than that, these, these meals are really about community. Um, people coming together after a long day where the fast may have been hard and coming to enjoy all the great prepared food together. Um, it's in, in today's world when everybody kind of has their own obligations and is running kind of on their own trajectory, it's nice that everybody can come together and enjoy the single meal and really, really connect. It's very common to invite friends, maybe some distant relatives, neighbors into your home to enjoy a meal during the month of Ramadan. This element of community, of fellowship, is central to the month and to the faith of Islam in general. How else do Muslims observe Ramadan? I think it's easy sometimes to really minimize the month of Ramadan to just fasting, but it's really more than that. Not only are you abstaining from food and from drink, but Muslims also try to abstain from, from negative thoughts and actions towards themselves, towards others. This is really a time to try to break bad habits as well. As I mentioned earlier, the Quran was revealed during the month of Ramadan. So during this month, Muslims not only take the time to read the text, but to reflect on it as well and to apply its teachings to their everyday life. In fact, many Muslims set the ambitious goal of reading the entire text in the 30 days. Prayer is a central aspect of Islam. During this month, however, the prayers are a lot more focused, a lot more driven, they're more intensive, and Muslims during this month really try to take the time to hone in on the effort to strengthen their prayers and their supplications. One of the things that, that we discover about ourselves when we fast is how fortunate we are in reference to other people. Um, when you're going multiple hours a day without food and drink, it really makes you thankful for what you have. And springing on this 
lesson of thankfulness during the month of Ramadan, Muslims take the time to, to give to others, whether that's monetarily or of their time. Um, and charity or zakat is one of the main pillars of Islam. And during this month, uh, Muslims go out of their way to give to others. At the culmination of the 30 days of Ramadan is a huge holiday called Eid al-Fitr. It's arguably the biggest holiday on the Islamic calendar. And um, it's, it's a big, you made it after, after 30 days of intense focus, of intense reflection, of intense prayer, of fasting. You may have struggled some days or you may have somebody, been somebody that really breezed through the whole thing. But it's just a way to, to celebrate the end and look back on the achievements that you've made. Um, it's also a time to really think about next year and prepare your agenda and your goals for the next Ramadan as well. Um, a lot of families celebrate this by going to the local uh, Eid prayer. Um, it's a prayer just dedicated to that time of year. Um, for example, my family in my hometown, we go to the local prayer. It's usually an event that's um, held at uh, a local community center and not the mosque because there's, the mosque is just not big enough. There's so many people that attend this. Um, a lot of times I see family and friends who I have not seen in ages or seen the end. It's just always great. There's um, really a, an atmosphere of joy and vibrancy and it's just infectious. Again, there's cultural variation in how this is celebrated, but typically people visit family and friends. Sometimes there's an exchanging of gifts, and of course there is an overabundance of foods, particularly sweets and baked goods. So what do you say to a friend, a colleague, or a coworker who may be observing the month of Ramadan? You can say Ramadan Kareem. Again, that's Ramadan Kareem. Loosely translated, that means, may the month of Ramadan be kind to you, or have a generous Ramadan. Or you can say Ramadan Mubarak. Again, that's Ramadan Mubarak. This translates to, have a blessed Ramadan. So then what do you say to someone who observes the month of Ramadan on the day of Eid? You can say Eid Mubarak. Again, that's Eid Mubarak. And that translates to, have a blessed Eid. Thank you for joining me for this brief chat about Ramadan. I hope you learned something. For those who observe the holiday, Ramadan Kareem and Eid Mubarak.